Hi, Eva here. I have a little demo for you. So here you can see I finished um, doing my little scribbles with the PPO High Precision Marker Pen. And um, it's dry now, dries fast because, you know, such skinny lines. Here it is again. PPO drawing gum. High precision masking marker. And um, again, that's one I I got it from the UK, from the UK website, Amazon website, but now my local art supply store, they are carrying this particular marker. And so I'm sure that um, if you uh, go to your local art supply store, um, they will be able to uh, get it for you as well. So I'm going to just um, put some water on the whole entire piece of paper and um, then I'm going to throw some colors on and let it dry. And then uh, we're going to create a very loose kind of um, Queen Anne's lace, some branches, something like that, painting. You can see it there. And I'm going to zoom out so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to start out with some French ultramarine blue, a little bit darker up there. Um, go in here and I want to keep that vase that it's in kind of light and um, let's see here I want to get another color in not just have it French ultramarine blue so uh, I'm just going to go in with a little bit of my Quinacridone red. Here and there. And get a little bit more water on. I want to get some nice lavender purpley colors. The blues and so a little bit more. Might be a little darker right there. There we have it. And then in maybe a little bit from there. I don't, I never like to have my corners too light or my bottoms for that matter. But a little highlight on the corner there, I think that could be nice. And um, see, everything's buggling right now because um, I didn't wet the back side of the paper, so I can do that now. Make it lay down, just miss the back. I'm painting on 300 pounds, but. For some reason, this one wanted to bubble. And uh, let's see here. Now it's beginning to relax. And I am kind of sort of thinking about maybe I want to. Um, let's, can I get it to do it here? Yeah. So maybe I'll um, sprinkle a little bit of water on. Hopefully, get some little backgrounds. Know how it is with backgrounds. If you want them, they they have a hard you have a hard time getting them to appear. And um, if you're worried about blooms, well, then they come easily. That's just how it works. Seems like it to me. So I'm just mixing a little bit of a purpley color. With the two 
colors that I have on here so far, French ultramarine blue and uh, black and red, and I'm just going to spatter a little bit. Why not? I think that could be kind of fun. And um, I might even try and get a little bit of a Queen Anne's lace uh, silhouette going on a couple of places. Maybe down here. Still very, very wet, and that's the idea. I don't want it, you know, I don't want it to. I'm going to mist into it again just to diffuse it a little bit more. And we'll see what happens. This is one of those paintings where it's just a matter of just having fun, trying different things, see what happens. It's not so terrible if it doesn't go exactly how we plan it. Then we'll just go with whatever we find there. So I think this will be fun. And I'm going to let it dry. And um, then uh, we will um, put some more darks on and bring some of those little branches out, rub the masking off, and um, hopefully have a fun little loose interpretation of a flower arrangement with some wild flowers and wild uh, branches and some Queen Anne's. So let's let it dry. All right, so my paint dried on top of my masking that I applied with the uh, uh, drawing gum, high precision mark, a masking marker from PBL. Um, and um, off camera, I had thrown on a little bit of salt in a couple of those areas where I wanted um, the Queen Anne lace to be more forward. And um, I think I did get a little salt action out of it. So um, you might want to try that. It was kind of a last minute thought, so I did it off camera. Sorry about that, folks. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to rub the salt off gently because I don't want to rub the masking off yet. My plan is to put on a couple more layers of paint before I rub the masking off. So uh, um, I'm getting ready for that. So I'm just going to mix my colors and then uh, I'm going to uh, put on a little bit more kind of diffused um, uh, vegetation and you know flowers and whatnot going on in the background before I take the masking off and uh, do um, the more um, defined uh, shapes. So before I um, wet the background again to put some more um, another layer of color on, put some more uh, branches and stuff on, I am going to actually go in and mask out. Uh, a little bit more so that um, so now I'm going to press this down get it flowing and um, that way I will get some shapes that are this lighter color that I put on first but not white so that is a wonderful way of building up layers in paintings um, so I'll take advantage of that, and my masking pen is flowing really nicely right now, so I'm also going to do some little dots here, so I can save some of that color that I got on this time around. And that could be really, really great. We'll see when we take it all off, you know. So, some more little shapes, and up here. And um, even up here in this little bit darker area, I'm just going to dot in and um, put some little branches and twigs. Same down here and dot in a little bit more here and scribble in, you know, thinking of Queen Anne's lace. And same here, some of those little. little stalks that's holding up the cluster of flowers. And dot in a little bit here. 
it's kind of hard to see where the masking fluid is going when I do it like this, but I'd be surprised, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> happily surprised when uh, I take the masking off. We'll see what happens. And it feels like I need to get this going again. Sometimes I felt I feel that it um, helps to kind of take the little nib out and then put it back in again, and then I get a better flow. So if it gets a little stuck on you, that's a good way of getting it flowing again. So let's do some out here and then here. Some of these can go in behind here, and probably some down here this way. All right, I think I'm good. A little scribble in here. Okie dokie. And then that has to dry, and then we'll get the next layer of color on. Okay, so my masking fluid has dried. My second coat of masking fluid ha has dried. So I'm going to wet the paper again, and I'm going to use a big spray bottle. Just um, that way I get a little bit of an uneven coverage of water and that I think could serve me perfectly. And um, I have my palette ready. I have two puddles of French ultramarine blue, quite watered down. And I have some of my um, quinacridone red. So I'm just gonna go in and put a little bit of that blue in here. And uh, put a little bit of color in here. There's another Queen Anne's lace, I think. And um, there's one kind of here, back here. So I'm just using the colors I already have on. And uh, there's one more. And that's down here. So I like to get a little bit of color in on those. And I think it's really ideal with the a little spray into them and here just even that out a little bit and I don't think I got this corner very wet so let's go in and get that a little wetter and there is some Queen Anne's lace here that's white so we want to put a little bit of color behind just kind of start bringing them out. It's a darker one. And I have one here. So I think I go in with a little bit of color here, kind of behind it. There we have it. And then um, I'm thinking down here at the bottom of the vase, be nice if I can darken up a little bit. And uh, maybe down in this corner, didn't get it very wet there. So here I'm also going to just spray in, same down here, maybe a little bit more blue. And a little spray here. Kind of keep you in the picture here. And I like that kind of organic look we got there. And clean that up a little bit. I, I want to make sure I don't have any hard edges anywhere yet. So I think a little splatter would be. Great, especially down here where there's some of those branches. A little bit of the red too. A little bit more up here. A 
and down here over the vase where those uh, branches are, we should get a little, we should get a little uh, drop bottle action going here, just so that they are not so perfect and they get a more organic shape. And then later we can use them, uh, combine them as some little things on the branches. Let me get a little bit more here. Yeah, I think that's good. And maybe a little bit more dot model action. Yeah. And I might spray into the ones I want to keep white. It's Queen Anne's. Yeah. Just thin it out a little bit. There we go. No. No, we do have the masking behind, so we should probably not have it too, too white, actually. So, changed my mind on that. A little bit of color in there. And this could be fun. Now, let's think about it. If I put just a hint, because I don't have any yellow anywhere else, and I don't want it very strong, probably have it dulled down with a little bit of the red. But how about this? Ooh, too much. But still, you get the picture. How fun is that? And I'll do a little bit here too. Okay. And then we could bring in a little bit of that just on this side of the base. Just a hint. There. Kind of like that. You know those things they're gonna be smudging out a little bit, but that's okay. Can I'll strip a little bit more. There we go. Okay, better leave it alone now. Could also I say that and then I don't do it, I know. I'm bad. I wanted to get a little bit of a diffusion going on here. Of course, that's out on the corner. And uh, there. Get that in like that. Push it back into the picture. Here we have it. I like that. I think that gave it a little bit more character. So now back to waiting for it to dry. Okay, so this is dry again and I applied some more masking fluid to these lighter areas. And uh, I found a couple of other areas where I kind of put some masking fluid on and uh, it's kind of hard to see here. And I put them on in kind of shapes of these Queen Anne's. And now I want to give it one more coat of um, paint in the same colors, which was the French Ultramarine Blue and the um, Queen Acadone Red. And I had a little bit of my transparent yellow, just a couple of spaces here. So we're gonna put one more coat of color on before we take the masking fluid off. And then we'll see what's there and finish it up. Okay, so I'm gonna wet the whole paper again with my big brush. And I'm really excited to see what's uh, gonna be revealed once we get the masking off because I have no clue at this point. This is an experimental painting. Haven't painted this before, but I'm I'm always up for experimenting and seeing what happens. You know, worst case scenario, you can use it as a uh, underpainting for collage. You can do mixed media on it. 
You can cut it up in little strips and make um, bookmarks out of it. There's a ton of possibilities, so no need to freak out. And um, now I'm going to put some more paint on, and I'm using my Quinacridone Red and my French Ultramarine Blue. Those are my two colors that I'm going to be using. I don't think I'm going to use the yellow, but you never know. I do have a little puddle just in case I change my mind. So a little bit of the blue and a little bit of the red on here. Oh, that's nice. And I really want to have it a little bit darker in here in some of these places. And down here for sure. And I really want to dark in here. It would be nice to have a little darkness around these areas that's going to be light, right? I'm going to need that. I think I want to get some more blue in there. There we have it, and I need some more glue. Mm -hmm. And then I could even do some little shapes like this. Darker in here. Yeah, everything's bugging, but that's okay. Let's see what we got. Take like some tissue. Yes, even though I'm painting on 300 pounds, it's really bubbling on me, but that's okay. I live in, you know, I live in a very dry climate. So the papers here where I live, they get really dark. Uh, no, not really dark, but they get really dry. That's what I wanted to say. They get really dark and dry. So let's see. A little bit of darkness out here, a little bit of darkness out here. There. So that's pretty good. Pretty happy with that. I want to put a little bit of darkness down here. Just don't want that edge to be too pronounced. There. You know when you're painting these kinds of paintings and it's, everything's wet like this, it really gives you a lot of time to kind of look at it before it starts drying. And I'm already thinking that um, once it starts drying on me a little bit, and the shine is leaving the paper, which is beginning to there, but here it's still quite wet. I had a hard line here that I don't like. Better like that better, yeah. Even put a little bit, maybe just how about that? Ha! Nobody says I can't do that. More that right up here. Um. So there. See what that looks like? Yeah, I kind of like it. I like more of that red. There. You know, you never want to put a color just one place. You want to spread it around a little bit. Have a little repeat of it somewhere else. Maybe it's a little strong. There. Okay. So now things are beginning to dry a little bit. And so I thought it could be really fun. If I take my dot bottle, I think we talked about that already. Arrow has a dot behind it and gives this dot pattern. And once things begin to dry, that's the time to do this if I want it to give some pattern. It might be a little too early, I don't know if it'll. So what happens then is that things start kind of creating tiny little blooms. I might have been a little too early, so I'll try to be patient 
and uh, just wait a little bit longer and then I'll do it again. The worst that can happen if you do it too early is that it just uh, diffuses and nothing happens basically. <laughs>